I finally did it. I built my first Hackintosh. Welcome back to the channel guys. My name's Dylan and I'm here to decode tech one video at a time. If you're new to the channel and this is your first time here and you find yourself enjoying the video from today, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to the right of it to be notified whenever I post videos like the one today in the future. Recently, I have been finding myself gravitating towards using Mac OS for my daily needs, whether that be web surfing or editing, anything really besides gaming, I found myself using my Mac Mini from 2012 or the 2012 Mac Mini. While the Mac Mini from 2012, which is an eight year old machine, really did surprise me and it just wasn't all there. I didn't feel like I was getting the full Mac OS experience. It could do editing and handle 1080p footage, but there was some lag here and there. It could surf the web, but it still felt slower than what I was used to with the Windows based machine or my my desktop machine. So that got me thinking and thinking hard. So I was thinking, I knew I wanted a machine that could really take my experience within Mac OS to the next level, kind of like my desktop with Windows on it and handle all the editing I threw at it. If I ever wanted to go towards 4K editing, I needed a beefy machine and something that could handle that. But when I looked at the prices of a decent Mac or Apple computer that had those specs that I would need to do things like that, it was pretty costly. The newly released Mac Pro from late 2019, the base model with eight cores, Xeon CPU chip within it, cost around $5,000 plus, and that's just the baseline one without any additional things added into it. While this Xeon chip is a great chip, it just is too costly for me to shell out $5,000 for a computer that I could build a Windows machine for a fourth of the price with similar performance. And that got me thinking, well, let's have a look at some of the lower end or the laptops that are Apple based. And while I looked at the MacBook Air, which is the cheapest, it costs still a pretty penny. It cost all the way up to $1,800 to fully max this thing out. And I was only getting 1.6 gigahertz from the processor. That's just not enough for what I was gonna be doing with this machine. And I just kind of was stumped and had to think of something else. And that my friends is what led me to building my first ever Hackintosh. Now today's video is not gonna be a guide on how to build a Hackintosh for yourself. Instead, it's just gonna go over the specific parts that I use to really make this Hackintosh work well, and also my overall experience and what is working within the Hackintosh build that I made. And I am going to be referring to that Hackintosh build as the Decoded Hack Mac. Kind of a stupid name. I know it's not the greatest name out there, but it's what I came up with and that's all I got. However, if you are thinking about building your own Hackintosh, I will have the guides that I used and all of the parts within my Hackintosh build or the decoded Hack Mac down below the video for your convenience. So make sure to check those out if you want to build one similar to mine. Also just check out the guides and get involved in the community. The Hackintosh community is great and they're always there to help you out whenever you need it. So make sure to check those links down below the video. I did just say it wasn't going to be a guide video, but this is kind of like a guide, but we'll ignore that. Starting things off at the top of the list, we're going to talk about the CPU and the one you should choose while building a Hackintosh and the one that I actually used for my decoded Hack Mac. And that is going to be choosing an Intel based processor. The reason for this is because real Macs have Intel based CPUs within them. And I know they're going to be changing over to their own CPUs in the near future. Damn you, Tim Cook. So that's why I went with an Intel CPU. And the one that I chose was the i9 9900K. The 9900K was perfect for my use case. I was going to be editing videos and graphics and whatnot. And the eight cores and 16 threads, the base clock speed of 4.6 gigahertz, and the turbo boost speed all the way up to five gigahertz was perfect for everything I was gonna throw at it, regardless if it was gonna be 1080p footage or 4K footage. And the nice thing about this is I can use it within a dual boot system, which I actually did, so I can have Windows OS to run and play games on and the i9 9900k is one of the top of the line cpus for mainstream gaming but it is an unlocked cpu so i could choose 
to overclock if I wanted to. Looking at the motherboard within the build and motherboards that you should or are highly recommended from the Hackintosh community are ASUS and Gigabyte motherboards. And one in particular that has really a high support within the Hackintosh community is the Gigabyte Z390 Designare motherboard. That led me to using that exact board, the Designare motherboard, the Z390 version of it. I don't even know if there's a Z370 version of it, but the reason it's so highly recommended among the Hackintosh community is because the Thunderbolt 3 ports found on the board are natively supported within Mac OS without any additions needed when you are building the Hackintosh, which is a really nice thing to have. When things are natively supported, it's great to have within a Hackintosh build. This board does come with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, but that is not natively supported within Mac OS. So you're gonna have to buy a different card, a Broadcom, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card for your M.2 slot. You can actually swap out the M.2 card that is in the Designare motherboard, or you could go the route that I went, and that is using a PCIe Express Lane card. One that is really highly recommended in the community and that I actually used in this build is the Fenvi based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards. It's a great card. Everything has been working perfectly. It's natively supported in Mac OS, and also you can use it in Windows, but you're gonna have to download some additional drivers to get it fully functioning. This leads us now to the GPU, and the GPU you wanna choose for a Hackintosh build is an AMD based card. And you're gonna to wanna to check to see if the AMD based card that you purchased for your Hackintosh is supported within Mac OS, which a lot of them are anyway, and that is because just like Intel being within real Macs out there, AMD based GPUs are in real Max. The GPU that I did pair within my decoded Hack Mac is the AMD based Radeon 7. The great thing about this card, it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, as well as a seven nanometer processor on the card, which is, I believe, the first ever GPU to have it, and it's just an amazing card. It packs a big punch when it comes to video editing because it utilizes that metal API that Apple recently released for their Final Cut Pro or Apple Motion and video editing is just a blast with this card. I love it, packs a huge punch and within the Windows based side of things with gaming, I haven't noticed a drop in frame rate whatsoever when it came to playing any of the AAA titles that I was used to playing on the 2080 that I used to have in my old Windows based PC build. You could say my first experience with building a Hackintosh has been pretty great. I have everything a real Mac would have. Things like iMessage work perfectly because I'm connected to my Apple ID, which also enables me to download apps from the App Store. I'm running the latest OS, which is Mac OS Catalina. Things like AirDrop work perfectly thanks to that Fenvi PCIe card that I added to the decoded Hack Mac. Even Handoff works within this build, which is so great. Let's talk about what you've all been waiting for though. Let's talk about the overall performance. And well, the overall performance of the decoded Hack Mac, it flies. Based on the most used software to benchmark Macs, Geekbench 5, the decoded Hack Mac fared pretty well. The decoded Hack Mac scored a 1274 for single core performance and a 9031 for multi core performance. And based on the results, it fares pretty well compared to real Macs. We have a look now at the graphs on the screen comparing it to real world Macs. The decoded Hack Mac takes the top of the chart compared to even the newest Mac Pro in single core performance with that score of 1274. Now I know single core performance isn't the end all be all, but it was really cool to see it top the charts against the rest of the real world Macs out there. Taking a look now at the multi-core performance for this machine, we can see that the decoded Hack Mac scored the 9031 and it sits pretty in between between the late 2017 iMac Pro with the Xeon 10 core model and the early 2019 iMac 9900K model. If you didn't notice from the graphs, well, the decoded Hack Mac actually outperformed the baseline $5,000 plus Mac Pro from late 2019 which is pretty sweet. At half the price of the Mac Pro and even cheaper than the iMac Pro, minus the 5K display I know, this machine runs and performs 
perfectly for whatever I do with it. Wrapping the video up now, I wanna touch on some final thoughts that I have with my first ever Hackintosh build. Building a Hackintosh is a great way to really learn more about OS systems and whatnot. But not only do that, but you can also build a Mac OS machine without shelling out thousands of dollars to get that Mac OS experience. That's not to say that Hackintosh builds are the end all be all and everybody should go out and build a Hackintosh because they do come with problems. Things come up and you have to diagnose what is causing that issue. And if this sounds like something that you do not wanna deal with, you're better off just buying an Apple computer or maybe just using Windows. That's the thing, Hackintoshes aren't the end all be all. There are issues that arise at times. Thanks again guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And if you liked it, make sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down in the comment section below or check out the Decoded Discord with the link to that Discord down below the video. And as always, until the next time, happy decoding.